All right, let me ask you a question. If I died tonight, what's the one thing? Why do you do this to me? Why are you so morbid? It's not morbid, it's romantic. If I died tonight, what's the one thing that you would miss the most about me? Only one thing. Yes, it has to be just one thing. Could it be your money? I think I'd miss your money the most. No. All right, let me think. Your hands. I'd miss your hands the most. My hands? Why? Because hands tell you everything you need to know about a person. For instance, based on these hands, I know that you're delicate, gentle, soft. Go on. Well, beautiful. My turn. Your hands are telling me that you're rugged and tough. I knew it. I knew it. But they're also telling me that you're going to be an amazing daddy. You're pregnant. I'm going to be a dad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is fantastic. Oh, 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 oh I got to call my dad. Wait, wait, when did you find out? This morning. Oh. I'm getting his voicemail. God! Hey, I was just about to call you. Oh, no. I had to tell you that there was at a meeting late. I, ha I had to stay late at the office. I had a meeting. Is that our client's office? Uh, no! Wait, when were you there? No, Kara doesn't always know where the meetings are. It's cold out there, Isaac. Bad day to forget your gloves. I'm sorry. How do you know my name? I meet a lot of people in my line of work. You look like an Isaac. What's your line of work? I make arrangements for people to go from this place to that. So you're a travel agent? Travel agent. I like that. I'm a travel agent. What's your job? I'm a writer. Ah, a writer. I heard a good story once. Want to hear a good story? Yeah, I'd love to. I was getting bored sitting here mourning my wife's death. Are you sure? Could no. Come in handy I one day. I don't want to hear a story. I'll tell you the story. Back during the Second World War, they used to draft guys by the dozen. As soon as you blew out your 18th candle, they pretty much rang your doorbell, shipped you off before you had your first bite of cake. How did they decide which branch to hang those poor souls from? That's a good question, Isaac. I'm glad you ask. Apparently, they had a test. If you could get one boot tied, you were good enough for the army. If you could get both boots tied, by God, you are a Navy boy. And the Marines? Different test. If you could beat up another guy and take his boots, Oorah! There was another way that you could choose where you went. Volunteer. Volunteer. I don't know why. I like you, Isaac. So if you ever need a good travel agent, I'll be around. Hey, where'd you hear that story? I meet a lot of Marines. I keep having this dream every night since for the past two weeks. I'm standing in front of this elevator in some building. 
and the elevator doors open. And there's this old phone sitting on the table. And there's this lamp and a number written on a piece of paper. And the number's always the same. 728-3437. And in my dream, I start to dial, but when I get to the last number, And no matter what I do, no matter how many times I call, it always happens the same. Do you think it means something? Eventually I figured it out. That number, 728-3437, it spelled something. Save her. Although in my dream I can never get through it, I can never save her. Oh, I'm sorry. That's oh. fine. I got it. It kind of reminds me of that snowstorm in Colorado when we hit black ice and the car ended up in the river. You remember that? No, I don't remember that story. You were two, maybe three. I think Jen was seven. We all got soaked, and it was way cold, way under zero that night. But somehow the back seat stayed above the water, so we all huddled in close to stay warm and to wait for help. How'd you know what to do? Well, I didn't. I knew if I stayed, it was just a matter of time. If I left, I wouldn't last an hour outside the car. Was that the hardest decision you've ever had to make? Yeah, it was tough. But you knew you had to do something, right? I mean, you couldn't just sit there and let it happen. Well, you're right, I couldn't. So I weighed my options and made the decision to act. But how'd you know it was the right decision? Son, sometimes when you have equal weights on both sides of the scale, all you can do is pick one side and watch the other come crashing down. It, it has to be easier than that. You think it was easy for me to watch my two children shivering in the cold? I mean, do you think it was easy to see the fear in my wife's eyes when I made the decision to leave the car to find help? But what if you'd been wrong? I mean, would you have been able to live with those consequences, with the guilt? So Isaac, what's wrong? Where's this coming from? What's going on? You wouldn't understand. Maybe I would. You wouldn't trust me. Well, whatever you're going through, whatever you're struggling with, I've learned in life that it takes a lot of courage to make the tough calls, and sometimes even more to live with the consequences. I love this city, all the buildings, the sounds, disgusting polluted air. You must really love it here. Big dangerous city like this, definitely spent some time here over the years. Yeah, I bet you have plans to visit often. And what are your plans for the future? Looks like I don't have much of a future. You don't, but she does. The baby grows up. Yeah, it grows up without a dad. A single mom struggling to She won't to be single for long, I'm afraid. You know what you are? You're the antagonist. Every story needs an antagonist. No rhyme or reason. It's the source of conflict. And that would make you the hero then. So tell me something, hero. When are you going to start playing the part? All right, prove it. Prove what? Prove to me who you are. Show me something. Prove to me that you're not some psycho. <sighs>
are you? I am the cold and bitter end of every sweet beginning. The unavoidable nightmare, yet I am far from a dream. I am the vast and endless cliff at the very edge of the world. I'm known as death. gloves. I think I left them at the park. Sorry. I'll go check. Wait. wait. What? I just wanted to feel your hands one last time before I go. Where are you going? I mean, before you go. <sighs> okay. I'll be coming right back. Dad, the night of the snowstorm, how did you save us? Well, I, I got out of that car, and I dug my hands in that snow and ice, and I climbed that cliff, and I stood right in the middle of that road, and did what any man would do in that situation. What? I prayed for a miracle. Thank you. 